Hey, what's up guys? Preston here, here to bring you a tutorial for all you After Effects users. We're gonna learn how to earthbend today and we're going to be creating this shot. So before we get started with the tutorial, I'd like to give a big shout out to today's video's sponsor, Production Crate. Production Crate is an awesome website. There's lots of different parts about their site. They have all of their assets everywhere from VFX assets to 3D models, as well as a blog and a forum where you can connect, learn new things, and download new presets that they are making, as well as scripts and plugins. And on top of all that, they have an awesome YouTube channel with plenty of great tutorials. So definitely go check them out, download some of the assets, and then we can use them in today's tutorial. Also, one quick thing to note, guys, before we get started, we are going to be using some paid plugins today. So if you don't have Video Copilot's Element 3D or any other sort of plugin that can bring 3D models into your After Effects composition, let me know down in the comments if you guys want me to work out a way to do this with no plugins at all, uh, just using 2D images. All right, so let's get things started. First things first, you got your footage in your composition. Look at that, nice little kick. So what we're gonna wanna do first is go to footagecrate.com and we are going to pick out our assets that we wanted to use. So I went to the debris section, dirt and debris right here, and I picked one of these ground explosions. Now there's a lot of great options for pro users. Highly recommend getting that, there's plenty of good content, but there's also tons of good content for free users as well. Whichever one you prefer, we can go ahead and grab that, and download it, drag it into our comp, so we wanna line it up right with the kick. So for this portion, uh, what we have to do first is try to color correct and adjust this image so it fits in with our scene. Cause as you see right now, kind of sticks out like a sore thumb, mainly because where I'm filming, there's a lot of different colored rocks that don't match this concrete gravelly color. So what I'm gonna do for you is go over a brief overview, speed through all the effects that I tweaked with to make this look perfect for my footage, but it's gonna vary depending on where you're shooting your stuff, how you're shooting your footage, and what your surroundings look like. Here's the effects I use to blend my asset to the scene. I added a CC toner, change that to pen tone, and then get colors from all around the scene. Then I put in a texturize layer, change the texture layer to my footage, change the light direction to zero, and then keyframe the texture contrast, starting at zero, and keyframing it up to 0.2, so not very intense effect there. Then I'm gonna throw on a Gaussian blur, throw the blurriness onto two. After that, I added a curves with just a slight adjustment to the RGB, pulling it up a little bit and then pulling down on the reds very so slightly, just barely enough to try to help the colors out here. After that, I added a tritone, used the base colors that it comes with and keyframed the blend with original value, starting at 75% and working my way up to 90%. So after this, to make it look more gravelly and like separated smaller rocks, I created a new layer, new solid layer, named it Fractal, added a Fractal Noise effect, changed the Fractal type to Rocky, changed the size to 14, changed the subscaling to 34, and then adjusted the offset turbulence as the rocks start down and then go up. So that layer we can drag to the bottom and even turn off because we don't need to see it, but we're going to use another texturize effect, change the layer to our fractal layer, select effects and masks, light direction at 245, and the texture contrast keyframe starting at 0.4, then just keyframing over two points, going down to 0.2. So that's helping the ground look a bit more broken up. So after that second texturize, all I did was throw a brightness and contrast just to help the lighting and colors yet again. Try to pull it all together and give it the same look as all the rocks around me and really blend it in. And I think it turned out pretty well. But like I said, this is gonna be different depending on what footage you're working with, what type of rocks and landscape you're working with. Could be a lot simpler or could be a bit more complex, but these are my effects that I used, and if you wanna try using the same ones, just with different colors and values, then go right ahead. Now, we have a debris explosion. 
looks great. And like I said earlier, you can just stop right here. Maybe you just want the ground to explode. You just want to make a little debris bomb. But we are earth bending in this comp. So we are going to take it a few steps further. So what we want coming out of this is going to be a giant boulder or rock. And what we use for our rock here, popped on over to production crate under the 3D section, went to objects, nature, landscape, and grabbed one of their many, 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 many 3D rock assets that production crate has so kindly made for us. And we're gonna put them in. So we're gonna do here, we're gonna go to layer, new, solid. We're gonna name this and drag that under the debris explode. Like I said, this effect does require element 3D. So go down to video copilot element. So now that we have element on our solve, we'll go to scene setup import. And I'm going to use granite rock seven. Pull up that one, hit okay. Uh, once it loads in here, it may take a second. It preloads the texture because they're great at 3D downloadable assets. And then I'm gonna normalize the size, make it a bit bigger, hit okay. Blammo, you got a rock in your scene. Look at that. But obviously we can't stop here. So I'm going to go into group one, ignore all this business over here, create group null, create. Now we have this null right here, which I'm going to rename rock null, drag it right next to the rock. Now we have full control over the rock with this null and it even moves 3D space. Look at that. Let's go to the end. So now we got to animate this rock. So we're gonna go right where we want the rock to stop here. We'll say, so it's gonna come out of the ground here. So we'll just throw a keyframe on the position right here for now, then go back to the beginning, right where it starts. And then I'm gonna just drag it straight down right underneath there. I'm gonna drag that keyframe up so it really just pops out. Turn on the motion blur right here for the 3D rock. So it really, you can kind of see it, but doesn't that feel a little bit just doesn't, doesn't quite feel right, it doesn't feel natural. So what I did to make the rock jutting out feel more natural and a bit more visceral is I used an effect on After Effects called Wiggler. And so what I did there is select my points on my position timeline and for the initial burst out of the ground, I had the frequency at 20 and the magnitude at 10. The noise type was smooth and only the X dimensions would be affected. Then I did it a second time for the aftershock of the burst. And for that, I did a frequency of nine and a magnitude of one. So it's just a little shake at the end so it just doesn't freeze in place as soon as it's out of the ground. And then I also changed it from smooth to jagged and made sure the dimensions were all independent. We gotta add a light. I'm going to layer, new, light, point light, and we want to adjust it so it's in the similar position of where the sun is in this shot. Adjust it slightly. That looks good. So now that we got that done, we are going to take our 3D rock, rock knoll, and point light. and select them all, holding down shift and clicking from top to bottom. Right click, pre-compose. I'm going to name this the rock comp. Now, uh, just really quickly, we want to get rid of this butt that we got hanging out here under the breeze. Super simple. Just draw a nice little mask under our debris. Switch that to subtract. And we really don't have to adjust the feather here because our debris does all the work of that. It kind of just blocks it off. So it's good as is. Obvious questions here. We need more contrast. We need to match the lighting. Now the 3D rock is gonna be a bit easier as far as that goes. Not gonna have to put nearly as much work into this because it's just a giant boulder. It is what it is. So I'm going to add a tritone. Change blend with the original 245. Then we're gonna add a levels effect here. Kinda pull that back, pull this forward. So I'm gonna throw a Gaussian blur on there. Try two. This is looking nice, but where's the shadow? First, we're gonna pre-comp this, 3D rock comp, the comping. We wanna duplicate this, label this one, rock shadow AE. We're gonna get it to its point right here. We're gonna make this layer itself a 3D object by clicking the 3D cube on the layer. Throw a tint effect on here. We're just gonna go matte black to black and white to black. So it's just a black rock. Tap R right here, pull down the orientation controls. Turn this around, flip it this way, make it flat, pull it here. And then we're gonna grab these corners, stretch it out. Let's make it real nice and long. We're gonna switch it to multiply. 
and put a fast box blur on top of that. Six or seven is good for this shot. We're gonna hit T to bring up the opacity. Really pull that down so it's a similar, you wanna see the same amount of rocks that you can see next to my shadow right here. 66, uh, we'll bump that up to 69. And then we're gonna go to Matte Black 2 and we're gonna adjust the black point. Let's move it up here to the blue section and we're gonna try to match this so it looks more like my shadow right here. Yeah, look at that. They make them both the same color. We're gonna have to duplicate it, put one on top, animate the keyframes. At the start, we'll say right about here when the debris are really up there. Stopwatch, 75%, then drag it along over here, and then crank it down to 45. And then for the top, starts at 10 and ends at 45. So right here, we're gonna click on 45 and then go back to over here at 10, just so it takes away that kind of ugliness right there. We're gonna need to create another mask right here for the top one that aligns with the debris properly. <laughs> Subtract and call it feather of four pixels. Kind of blend it with those rocks right there. And now look at that. Got the rock coming up, the shadow grows with it. And for one final layer on top, I wanted to add a reason that I was earthbending. So we had a firebender attack. For that, it was just as simple as heading over to Production Crate. They have hundreds of different fire assets of all sorts, but I went over to the Magic Powers section and went to their Fire and Smoke where they have a bit more magical stuff, such as firebending or fire casting. So I took this one right here, fire casting POV1, downloaded that, I dropped it into my composition right here and I wanted to time it so it would hit a little bit after the debris had all landed, just so it could fully show off the power of my boulder I just summoned. And I just scaled it down a tad, moved the position down. Already as is, just throwing that on top, it looks great. But like everything else in this comp, we gotta spice it up a bit. I'm gonna to go to Production Crate's free plugin right here, Crate's Heat Radiation. It's a cool plugin that helps make your fire assets more realistic and more believable. And after that, I'm just gonna throw it on a screen mode, turn down the max temp, and look at that. We got ourselves an Earthbender V Firebender. All right, and with that, we have the end of the tutorial. So uh, let me know what you guys think. Questions, comments, or concerns down in the comments. Let me know how I did. And show me your guys' stuff. Uh, check me out on Twitter right here. And tweet me your video if you followed this earthbending tutorial. I want to see what you guys can do. And another huge shout out to Production Crate. Go check out their website and check out their YouTube if you want more tutorials on using their assets and learning new effects and tricks in After Effects. Also, let me know down in the comments, guys, what do you want me to do next? I'm going to be doing a lot more tutorials on this channel now, and uh, what do you guys want to learn? Hope you enjoyed. See you next time.